Hi there, today I'm going to be walking you through the create loop from text action that's available within Zapier. In this example, I'm going to be using this customer database Google Sheet, which just contains a number of rows containing first name, order number, email address, and phone number. And then the delivery today column is true if the person will receive their order today. And in the case that they're receiving their order today, we want to send them an SMS message and an email notification, letting them know that their order will be delivered today. So this is the example that we're going to use. And as a prerequisite for this post, I recommend you take a look at this Zapier import multiple rows from Google Sheets post. So I'll put the link to this blog post within the YouTube description, and this covers everything I'm going to cover in this video today, and it'll contain all the links to important prerequisite information such as this blog post here so check this one out because in this blog post it shows you how you can send a webhook from google sheets to zapier containing all the information that you want to loop through and why you might want to use a webhook to send information from google sheets to zapier instead of using a google sheets app within zapier this is because the google sheets app is restricted to only pulling in 10 rows at a time so in Zapier, if you use the Google Sheets, um, find spreadsheet rows with line item support, that can only pull in 10 rows at once. However, there are cases where you'll want to pull in hundreds of rows at a time. And if you want to do this, you're going to need to use a webhook uh, to send that data from Google Sheets to Zapier. So take a look at this blog post, which explains it. I'll give a quick run through here of how it works. So in this example, I've got this Google app script connected to this button. So whenever I, whenever I click this button, it loops through all these rows and it collects every single row where column E for delivery today is true. It collects every single one of these and then it sends them in a webhook to Zapier and it concatenates them all together and by concatenate, I mean it just joins them all together. So it joins all the names together, all the order numbers together, all the emails together, and all the phones together using this star delimiter. So when I click this button, that all gets sent to Zapier using a webhook. So if we jump back into Zapier here, once I've clicked that button and we go to test trigger, I can see that Google Sheets has sent me all that information with all the first names concatenated together using the asterisk character, all the orders, phone numbers, and emails also, conca also concatenated together using the asterisk character. So once we have all this information within Zapier, we're then going to go to the Looping by Zapier app and the Create Loop from Text event. And when we're setting this up, we're gonna pull in all the names that we got from the webhook, the orders, the emails, and the phones. And as I mentioned before, we're using the asterisk character as the delimiter. So we're going to use this here. And you'll notice here that Zapier automatically imposes a 500 iteration maximum on your loops. So if you want to get around this and you need to loop for a thousand times, 10,000 times, etc., you're going to need to use nested looping. So I've got you covered for that. If you want to know how you can use nested loops to get around this 500 iteration limit, check out this Zapier for each loop quick start guide and that will help you out. So now we've got all the iteration variables that we want to iterate over. The next thing we want to do is we want to send each person in this spreadsheet with the checkbox equal to true. We want to send them an SMS and email letting them know that their order will be delivered today. So in action number three, we pull in the email variable, order variable, name, and order. And we use this to populate the email body and the subject line. So this is going to run through. In this example here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six checkboxes selected. So this action is going to run six different times. And each time it's going to pull in a different email address, order number, and first name, and then send the email to that person. And then similarly in step number four, I'm using the Telnex app to send SMS. If you want to know how to get started with Telnex, 
and why you might want to choose them as your SMS provider, check out these two blog posts here, the Marketo two-way SMS using Telnex and Zapier and Marketo SMS marketing with Telnex. Although these um, use Marketo as their example, all the information I'm in here, all the information I include in these blog posts is more applicable than just to Marketo. They just give all, they just give all round good information about Telnex. So I'd recommend checking them out to help you get started sending SMS within Zapier. And then the setup for action number four is very similar where we just send from a number in our Telnex account to the phone number. So again, this is going to iterate over the six phone numbers in our Google Sheet and send a different text to each phone number, putting in each person's first name and their order number. So each of these two actions will run six times to send six emails and six SMS messages. But then you might be wondering, what if I only want an action to run? What if I only want an action to run once after the loop is complete? The way you achieve that is using a filter. So what you do is you bring in the loop iteration is last variable from step number two. And whenever this is true, we know that the loop has completed all its iterations. So any actions we include after this filter will only run once. So that's why in step number six, we're going to send a single summary email. And we're going to pull in the timestamp that we got from the webhook in step number one. And we're going to pull in all the names, orders, emails, and phones. And we're going to send a whole single summary email to my address here so I can see all the people whose orders will be delivered today. And then we're going to do the same for SMS. We're going to send a single text to my phone number containing all the orders that will be delivered today. So these two actions will run once because they're after the filter. And then these two actions before the filter will run for each iteration of the for loop. So I'll show you what the output of this app looks like. So when I check my inbox, I'll zoom in for you guys, we can see that these actions, which run before the filter, they send us the individual emails or the individual texts. And then these two actions that run after the filter, they send us one single summary text or they send us one single summary email. And you might notice here that the order is not sequential. So we see email three gets delivered before email six, which gets delivered before email one. So this is a known issue with the looping by Zapier app. If the order that the loop executes in is important to you, then I recommend taking a look at either webhooks or delays in order to make sure that the loop executes sequentially. So if you use a webhook, you can always ensure that iteration one completes before iteration two completes before iteration three. And this blog post here explains how you can use webhooks to do looping. And then an alternative is you can use delays where the delay pulls in the loop iteration number. So for the first iteration of the loop, the delay will be one minute for the second iteration. The delay will be two minutes. And for the third iteration, the delay will be three minutes. So that's how you can ensure that iteration one always completes before iteration two always completes before iteration number three. So take a look at these two links here. If the sequential running of the loop is important to you. And then one other thing I'll point out is if you actually want to send a lot of emails in a short space of time, use a different app besides the email by Zapier app because this has rate limit issues. If you try and send a lot of emails in a short space of time, it'll complain and your zaps will be put in a held status. So use an app like Gmail or maybe Mandrill, which are more tailored to sending a lot of emails in a short space of time. So that's everything I have to cover in this app today. And I hope you now know how to use the create loop from text action within the looping by Zapier app. As I mentioned before, you can only loop with 500 iterations using the looping by Zapier app. And if you want to overcome that, you're going to have to use nested looping. And if you're interested in finding more about nested looping, then check out the Zapier for each loop quick start guide. That'll teach you all about that. And as I mentioned at the start of this, 
if you want to pull in more than 10 rows from Google Sheets at a time, you can't do this using Zapier's native Google Sheets app. It's only limited to pulling in 10 rows. So you'll have to use a webhook to send large amounts of data from Google Sheets to Zapier. And this blog post here explains how you can do that. So check those two things out. They're good prerequisites for what I covered in this video. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments of the YouTube video here or within the comments on this blog post. Thank you. Have a great day.